Now, this painting is called um, The Druids Bringing in the Mistletoe. This is actually just the bottom part of the painting. There's what the upper part looks like. The Druids Bringing in the Mistletoe. It was painted in 1890. And you were probably wondering there for just a moment, why does he keep showing us that same picture? Today our session is, how long before my ads start working? You were sitting here seeing that cube tumble, seeing that same picture over and over and saying, why? Why does he keep showing us this same picture? I contend that the public asks the same thing about your ads. Why do they just keep saying the same things over and over? How long till my ads start working? There's an answer, and the answer is this. You're going to have to answer a few questions before you can know it. <laughs> now, question one, what percentage of the noise made in your category is being made by you? This is your share of voice. Now, when I say the noise in the category, what I'm actually talking about is the total advertising, public relations, marketing, promotion, word of mouth, billboards, flyers, everything. Everybody in your space, everybody in your business or service category is making noise through the media or through word of mouth or through social media. It just doesn't matter. Let's just call all of that the noise. What percentage of all that is yours? Now there's no real way to know that specifically and there's a couple reasons why you can't know accurately is the first of which is this could only be known accurately at the level of the individual. One person might be a lot more aware of your competitor and the person next to them is a lot more aware of you than they are of your competitor. Why? Because they're exposed to different vehicles of communication because they're different individuals. But generally speaking, loosely speaking, in the aggregate, what percentage of all the noise being made is being made by you? Now, when you've answered that question, you will have calculated what we call the product purchase cycle. Well, no, excuse me, question two. What percentage of the population will actively be in the market for your product this week? When you've answered that, you will have calculated the product purchase cycle. Now, the second question is, first question, how much of the noise is your noise? The second question is, what percentage of the population will actively be in the market for your product this week? Now, product purchase cycles are calculated for services just like they are for products. And for an example, automobiles have a medium length. That's right, medium length product purchase cycle at 180 weeks. That's how often the average United States citizen or citizen of Canada will trade cars every 42 months. Now that calculates to just slightly more than one half of one percent of the public is in the market for a vehicle, new or used, this week. That's barely like one, well it's one out of every 180. Okay. Now, does that mean that anyone who advertises cars is wasting 99.45 percent of their ad dollars? Hmm. If you measure on a short time horizon, if you measure this Saturday night, the quote success of this week's advertising, then yeah, stupid, you just wasted 99.45% of all of your investment. But you and I both know that that's a dumb way to look at it. Sooner or later, the vast majority of the public will in fact be in the market for a car. As a matter of fact, over the next 42 months, a huge percentage of the public over the age of 16, as a matter of fact, one could easily say the vast majority of the public over the age of 16 will in fact be in the market for a car. And so no, if your message was memorable, if it was memorable, then you didn't waste 99.45% of your dollars. But what if the message was, save $500 this week only, must respond before Saturday? That message doesn't really move forward into the future except if it's reputed too often. It it's moves forward into the future in this regard. The public learns, don't do business with these people unless they're offering you a discount. Don't go to these dry cleaners unless there's a two-for-one coupon in the paper. Don't order pizza from these people unless they're 
having the buy one get two free special because they will do that periodically just wait until they're doing that you will find product and service organizations that have advertised discounts so consistently that they have literally trained the public to wait for that event and if they're not having one of those discount events they can't do their volume they can't make the numbers they need to make now 180 weeks is in fact a medium length product purchase cycle food on the other hand has a very short product purchase cycle now the shorter the product purchase cycle the quicker your ads will reach their maximum return on investment that shouldn't even surprise you if somebody buys something every week every week the vast majority of the public buys this product let's say milk and eggs and bread something like that well guess what your campaign, your advertising campaign, will reach its full potential a whole lot sooner than if you're, than if you're selling, or advertising rather, um, air conditioners, or refrigerators, or tires for your car. You just don't need those things nearly as often. Now, question number three. What's the degree of credible urgency? Now, there's three ways to build credible urgency. How long is this offer good for? How many of these do you have available? In other words, if it's something that there's not, there's, there's a shortage of these. It doesn't even have to be a, a special discounted price. It's just something that nobody has. It's what everybody's looking for for Christmas, and there's not nearly enough to go around. Well, if you're going to advertise those, you need to tell people how many of those you have in stock so that they know what their odds are or how special it is to, to get there in time. And then why now? Why do I need to do it now? How many do you have, or how long will they be available um, those are the questions that need to be answered to give you credible urgency. Now, urgency without credibility is hype. That is the definition of hype. It's when you create urgency, but the urgency has no credibility. Now, credibility without relevance is the answer to a question no one was asking. Credibility without relevance is boring. Now question four, how many people will ever be in the market for this product or service? Your message will forever be irrelevant to a percentage of the public, but what percentage? Now, here's what you do. You want to compare the universe of interested parties, people who in fact may someday need what you sell. What percentage of the total population will ever be interested? Now, let's say that you're selling Engagement rings. Okay, what percentage of the public will ever get engaged? That is your universe. Because people who don't get engaged are not necessarily target customers for you. But do the non-targets have a value? We're going to talk about that today. I contend, yes, your non-target is almost as important and in some ways even more important than your target customers. Now, the size of the potential customer universe is optimistically stated by trade associations. In other words, if you want to know how many people buy this or how many people you know, choose to hire this service, well, every business had a has a trade association or a trade magazine. They'll always have some number, and it's usually crap. It's usually optimistic overstatement. But then those same organizations will have membership rosters sometimes and somewhere between the numbers that they say and then the numbers that they can demonstrate is the real truth there's a there's literally countless ways to come up with good solid estimates of how many people will buy a whatever or how many people will hire a whatever this year it's just not that hard to calculate 